Steve Shine of Shine of Dynasty Media. I'm here today to talk to you about the Icon QCon Pro X. We're going to use it with Pro Tools. We're going to demonstrate how it works with the mixing automation system. So to demonstrate how automation works with Pro Tools, I'm going to use audio from this video of our good friend Nadir Omawali and his band. And then we'll post the link to the finished product uh, at the end of this demo. Now I did another video about how to get around in Pro Tools in general using the QCon Pro X and you can go watch that video uh, here, here's the link. And uh, well, last time we went over automation really, really quickly but we didn't cover it in depth because it's kind of a big topic. So we're going to try to do that here. Back in the 50s and 60s, producers, engineers, and musicians would kind of gather around the console and choreograph every knob turn and button push uh, that needed to go into a mix, and then the whole thing would go down to their stereo master tape. Now everybody's pretty comfortable with adding some control points and drawing some data changes into a fader or what have you, but the more musical option is really to enter those kinds of changes from your faders on the icon. It gets you more focused. It gets your attention out of your eyes and more into your ears and listening to what you're actually doing instead of being dazzled by the bright lights of a computer screen. If you're not familiar with automation data in Pro Tools, it's good to know that you can grab the particular parameter you want to adjust in the edit window here, and then you can see the changes that you make to it, whether you're using your mouse or your faders. There's a whole list of things that you can access from that pop-up menu. Let's see what we can do. One of our favorite mixing solutions is grouping. Grouping allows you to control several individually set faders with just one fader. So this is perfect for controlling something like drums or a horn section or a group of background singers where you have a musical part that's made up of several tracks. Grouping allows you to maintain relative levels between faders in that group while proportionately increasing or decreasing the volume of each one. If the snare is set louder than the hi-hat, it'll stay louder by the same amount no matter how much you adjust the group level. To set up a group, you can either go to the track menu and select Group or press Command G. The Create Group window will come up and you can go under the Track tab to the Available window and then double click each track that you want to include in the group to add it. Then give your track a name and make sure that you select Mix Edit and follow globals. You're going to want these settings probably 98% of the time. Hit OK and your group is set up. Now if you grab any of the drum faders, all of the drum faders will be affected and they'll move along with it. And that's pretty great and it works for a lot of things. But what if you need to change the level of one track within the group? You could turn off the group, make the change, and then turn the group back on. Or, a better solution might be to use VCA Masters. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, and it was the old school method for controlling a group of faders on an analog console. Each fader had a voltage controlled amplifier built in that could be assigned to and controlled by a master voltage control. You assign which tracks are controlled by which master, and now you can focus on a few faders rather than a few dozen at a time. To create a VCA Master, use the new track command. Select the VCA master as the track type, and then click OK. You'll see that the track has no meter. That's because there's no audio passing through it. It's not like a regular channel. It's just an extra controller. It'll show up on the QCon Pro X on the appropriate fader, though. You're going to want to make sure that in your Pro Tools preferences, under the Mix tab, you've selected Standard VCA Logic for Group Attributes. This will make sure that your pan pots aren't grouped even though your faders are. If you need to, you can change that setting in individual groups by editing globals. Globals are settings that let you define which parameters are being controlled in the group. And your user's manual gives you a pretty good explanation on when or why to change some of those globals. Now we'll go to the VCA fader. We'll go to the assignment button, we'll select the drums, and now this fader is going to be the group master for drums, and you'll also have a fader for it on the QCon Pro X. And now you can change the fader level individually, and then still have the VCA control the overall level of the group.
Now this may just seem really obvious, but it, it really is efficient and effective to have your VCA masters clustered together in front of you. Mixes can get really complicated, and this is a move that improves your focus and centers your listening. Pro Tools and the QCon have several automation modes available for entering and editing mix automation data. The automation status for each track is displayed here on the mix screen. To set the mode of a channel, hold down the mode button you want and then punch the control knob for the track you're working with. The status changes in Pro Tools. The drop down menu under the auto heading is where you access all your automation modes either from the screen or from Pro Tools. Automated mixes can get really complicated. Here's three things that should make it go smoother. One, start with a good static mix where things sound generally good all the way through. Two, make a hit list of things that you hear need to happen in the mix and then use that list to set up and assign your groups. And then three, it's a good idea to use individual faders for things like fixes and repairs. And then use your VCA and group masters for musical decisions like pushing the drums during the chorus or dropping the guitars during the breakdown, things like that. Let's run down the automation modes really quick. The first mode, and it's the default mode for each channel, is read. Any automation written will be played back when you're in read. Next is write. When a track is in write mode, it writes automation from the time playback starts till the time that it stops. The touch mode basically puts the fader into read mode until you touch the fader. You can even see the blue light above the fader here, letting you know that the QCon knows you're there. When your finger is on the fader, you're writing new data. This is a fun mode because I can push in the change and when I let go, the track just goes back to reading the previously written data. Latch mode writes new data starting from the moment you touch the fader and it continues to write new data until you hit stop or change the automation mode. You can pick your default mode for what happens when you let go of the fader in the preferences window under the mixing tab where it says, after write pass, switch to. If you're in latch or touch mode, you can watch the fader motion in your mix window here. Make a change, write new data, and then watch for the auto match indicator to tell you if you're below the original level, above it, or back to the original level, as shown when both arrows go dark. That'll tell you when you've come back to the pre-written level and you can stop or let go. Touch latch mode is new in Pro Tools Ultimate and it puts your fader in touch mode and everything else like pan pots in latch mode. If your system has it, you'll need to set it up from your DAW screen. Trim mode is available in Pro Tools HD and Pro Tools Ultimate, and it only works on level controls like volume faders and send levels. Trim mode lets you maintain a series of written changes while pushing the overall level for them up or down. In the off mode, the channels will not respond to any written automation data. The suspend button on the QCon lets you temporarily defeat all of the automation data for comparison purposes. Any parameter that I can grab from the QCon Pro X, I can automate. Here, I'm going to go to my vocal window and I'm going to select my send level. And then I'm going to go down to the QCon and I'm going to hit the flip button and this reverb happens to be on send B. So now, my faders are my send levels, and I'll select which send I'm adjusting here, and then I'll grab this one, and as I run it, you can see that I'll make an extreme case, and turn the reverb way up on the vocal. Don't forget that you can also enter data for, say, panning, or some of the parameters on your plugins by using the knobs. Uh, those are automatable too, and those respond to the modes just like the faders do. If you want to check out the rest of Go It Alone, you can go to michiganlivemusic.com, and in the video gallery, Go It Alone is uh, right at the top row. You can select it, watch it, and check it out. It's also on YouTube. You can check it out here. Mix Automation in Pro Tools is a really powerful tool in your arsenal, and the QCon Pro X makes it dead easy to work with. If you have any questions, go to iconproaudio.com for tech support and more information. Good luck and good mixing. Communication breakdown. I've crossed enemy lines. I'm on danger.
dangerous ground.